Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating custom warps in Photoshop. But before I start the video, let me tell you we can find additional Photoshop training of mine. I have classes at Skillshare and there's a coupon in the description below that includes an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine is better still. If you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine covering Photoshop, Illustrator and Procreate. Please feel free to share these coupons with family and friends. So back to Photoshop and let's have a look and see what we're trying to do. I'm a member of a number of Facebook groups and somebody posted on one of those groups a question as to how to create a text effect like this and they wanted to use Photoshop. Now it would be much easier to do it of course in Illustrator but I took up the challenge and this is what I did. So first of all I went to 1001 fonts to find a font to use and I found this font called Sablon, S-A-B-L-O-N. It's pretty close to the font that was used in this particular illustration so it will be a good guide as to how we're getting this effect and whether we're able to achieve it or not. Having downloaded and installed the font I then created a brand new document. I'm just going to make a square document 1200 by 1200 pixels in size and I'm going to type my text. Now if you're trying to achieve an effect and you've seen it somewhere else, the best thing to do is to try and reproduce it first of all and only after you're able to reproduce it and you know what you're doing, then go and create it using whatever type it is that you want to actually use. So what I've got is the type text home here and I'm just adding the shift key because I'm using the most recent version of Photoshop and I just want to skew this out a little bit out of proportion just to make it a bit longer. These days in Photoshop if you just drag on the corners then things are going to be scaled proportionally if you want to scale it not in proportion the most recent version of Photoshop you have to throw in the shift key it's the behavior has just changed totally so just be aware of that if you're using a more recent version of Photoshop. Now the solution to this is to use the warp tool but if we have a look at the original document you will see that the top line of this text is pretty straight and we're actually going to end up with straight top line to the text. So before I start I'm just going to grab a guide and just bring it down so that we can keep an eye on the top line of the text. You can drag a guide out of the ruler line if you've got the ruler lines visible. If they're not just choose view and then rulers so you can see them. So with the text selected, let's just go and confirm we have the text layer selected. I'm going to choose edit and then transform and then warp. Now up here on the toolbar are the warp options and so I'm just going to drop down this list. Now there's nothing that achieves exactly what we want. The closest that it's going to achieve what we want is actually arc lower. You can see that the top line is pretty straight. It's not going to be in a minute but it looks like it's pretty straight and the bottom is nice and curved. It's just curved the wrong way. So I'm going to click on that to accept it and you can see that it is pulling the top line a little bit. The H and V values just change the perspective on the text. Let me just show you. This is the V value. It's going to spin it out at the bottom. If we used a negative value it would spin it out at the top. The H value is going to sort of twist it in one direction and in another direction if we go to a negative value and that is really giving you the biggest hint you're going to need for what we need to change. Right now the bend is 50 and it's in this direction. If we go to minus we're going to pull it back up. So we need to go to zero and then start going backwards. So let me just put zero in there and let's start decreasing this value and we're pushing up the bottom line of the text. Unfortunately we're pushing up the top line too so that's going to be an issue that we have to deal with in a minute but what I'm looking at now is this bottom line and everything looks good there so I'm going to click the check mark. Now you're probably thinking that the way to organize the top of this is to apply another warp and that's a really good idea except that when you go to edit transform and warp it comes back to the warp that we were using and we don't get a choice of applying a second warp. So I'm just going to get out of here. What I'm going to do over here in the layers palette is make this a smart object. Right click on it and choose convert to smart object because now I can add a second warp and the Photoshop's not going to try and undo the warp I already have. So edit, transform, warp. 
Now we've got a bend across the top that we want to flatten. So let's see what warp we've got that might allow us to pull down a bend at the top. And we already know what's going to do that because we saw it previously, the fact that the bends can be edited. So I'm going for arc upper and I'm going to set it to zero, which is going to take us pretty much back to where we were. And now I'm going to start decreasing it because that's just going to pull that top line back down. I'm just looking for something that's going to be pretty close to what I want. I could probably go like half a degree. Let's try that again. When I choose Edit Transform Warp, I get back to what I was at before. And let's just see if we can go down a little bit. That's pretty good. It's pretty even across the top now. And so if I'm finished with my guide, I can choose View and I can just click Clear Guides. And now we have this bent piece of type and you can see that the top of the E and this middle bar and this bar have all been bent and they should be bent. If we have a look at the original image, these are bent as well. And so this effect in Photoshop has allowed us to create the warp that we want across the bottom. And then we just cleaned up the slight warp that we were getting across the top. I hope that this video has helped you see the possibilities of using the warp tools in Photoshop and how you can customize them to suit your own needs. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.